In this video, we'll be using Adobe Photoshop and Media Encoder to create this GIF. Starting with a side note, the inventor of the graphics interchange format calls it GIF, so that's what I'll use. Before we begin, you'll want to make sure that you have Photoshop and Media Encoder installed. I'll be showing you how to turn a flat two-dimensional photograph into an image that appears to have three-dimensional qualities. This is known as a two-and-a-half-dimensional animation or parallax. Imagine taking an image from your phone, pulling out the subject matter, and then bringing it alive through animation. You can choose to have your subject matter grow in size, shift the foreground or background, do a dramatic zoom in, or scale down. You can separate out spaces or have it crawl across the picture plane. These are just a few of the examples of the choices you'll be able to make. Before we begin, you'll want to make note of the size requirements or restrictions for where you're going to put your end product. I want to add my GIF to this Google slideshow, but they do limit it to under 50 megabytes. So I'll take note of that when I am constructing the GIF later on. A couple of tips for selecting the most successful pictures. Backgrounds with man-made or geometric patterns can be difficult to manipulate, whereas abstract backgrounds are more forgiving. Make sure that the subject matter is whole in the picture, making it easier to outline. And anything that is part of your subject will also be part of the movement, so pay attention to what you will be selecting. You'll open up your image that you choose with Photoshop. This is your chance to do any photo corrections. So I've straightened my horizon line. I worked with the white balance because it was more true to blue that day. And I also used an exposure brush to brighten up the dolphin. And a good rule of thumb is to save your befores and afters. Next, we'll be using the crop tool. And the format that we'll use is the HD resolution, which is 16 by 9 aspect ratio, or 1920 by 1080 pixels. Of course, you'll use whatever ratio is required by the service that you will be sharing your GIF. For example, I know that Instagram is 600 pixels by 600 pixels square. Then you'll use the handles on the border box to adjust and remove any part of the picture that you no longer need. Mainly I'm using it to turn this portrait style image into more of a landscape. Once it's where you like it, go ahead and accept that crop. This is another moment where you might want to save your work, save your after image. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and I know that I'm zooming into 100% and I will scroll to adjust You'll do the same, making sure that you are zoomed into your subject matter. Select the pen tool from your toolbar and start at one end of your subject matter, clicking to outline it. Every time you click, it's going to drop down an anchor point. Now, if you make a mistake and you need to erase one of those anchor points, if you're using a Mac, you'll want to hit the delete key. And if you're on Windows, you'll hit backspace. If you're a designer, this is the pen tool that you have perhaps used in Illustrator. It works exactly the same in Photoshop. If you click and drag on one of the anchor points, you will pull out handles and you can use that to make curves around your subject matter. But if you're a newbie, no problem. You'll just continue clicking and adding those anchor points. I suggest that you lean a little towards the outer edge of your subject matter. That way you're not cutting into it by accident. So as I am clicking around, I'm clicking more into the water portion of the picture plane, not into the dolphin. This is because I can go back and I can erase part of the water, but I do not want to, of course, erase part of my dolphin. As you are clicking, your goal is to very carefully select the subject and make your way back to the starting point, the first place you clicked. As I hover my cursor over that initial anchor point, I see a circle indicating that I will be closing the path. So as soon as I click, I can see that I have closed the path along the outline. Right click and choose make selection from the dialog box. Now we'll be feathering out the outline just a bit and it depends on the size of your subject matter. I'll be using a feather radius of one pixel 
and you can start with that and adjust if you need to. Click OK. Your selection of anchor points will turn into these marching ants. Come up to your menu bar, choose Edit, and then we will be copying our selection. If copy is grayed out, that's okay. You can also choose Copy Merged, followed by Edit Paste, and you will see that it has put your selection on its own separate layer. I turned off the visibility of my background layer, and I can see the selection of the dolphin separate from it. Back over to the toolbar, you'll be choosing your eraser tool and the option bar up above will allow you to change the size of that eraser. You can also use the quick shortcut keys on your keyboard. Your left bracket key is going to make your eraser smaller and the right bracket key will make it larger. Zooming in a bit so that I can see better detail, I want to use the eraser to come along the outside edges of my subject matter and erase any parts that I don't want in this layer. So I'm going around the dolphin and I am removing all of the water that is appearing in this layer. Now, if I accidentally make a mistake and I go too close to the dolphin and remove part of it that I don't want to, I can always go backwards. So I can use shortcut keys or I can come over to the history and go back into history. I can also edit and go back to uh, undo state change to get it back to where I want it. So you'll take time going around your subject matter and cleaning it up. Once that's done, I'll turn back on the visibility of my background layer, and I'm going to go ahead and just double click on the text and rename them just so that it's easier and I don't get confused between the different layers. So one will be dolphin and the other will be water. And this step can be a little tricky. I've deselected off of my layers. Now I'm going to hold Command on a Mac or Control on a PC, and I'm gonna click the thumbnail layer of my subject, the dolphin. I'm still holding Command or Control, and then I come down to my background layer. Next to the text, I click that layer. So what that's done, it's taken the selection of my dolphin and it has put that on top of the active layer, which is the layer of the water. Up top on the menu bar, I'm going to go to Select, Modify, and Expand. And what this is doing is the dolphin is still visible on our background water layer, and I want to get rid of it. So we're going to use a 10 pixel expansion and click OK, and this expands the marching ants to ensure that no little bits of the dolphin are going to be left behind. Back up top on our menu bar, we will go to Edit and Content Aware Fill. Now you may or may not get this new box that pops up. It depends on which version of Photoshop you're using. If you are getting this as an option, what it's telling you is that the green area is the area that it will be taking from. And here you can see this preview of how it's filled in where the dolphin is using parts of that green selection area. You have a bunch of choices over here that you can make adjustments with if it's not picking from the right portion, say it was picking from the sky instead of the water. However, mine looks great, so I'm gonna come over to Output 2, and we wanna output it to the current layer. Current layer is going to be that background water layer. Click OK, and it brings us back. If I turn off the visibility of the dolphin layer, you can see that it's done a great job filling in where the dolphin was with some of the water. Now I have a splash over here that I also wanna take care of. I'm gonna Command or Control D to deselect the marching ants, and I'm gonna just do a closer inspection to make sure this background looks good. I'll deal with that splash in a minute, but I wanna check the area where the dolphin was and see that the water makes sense. There's no telltale signs that something's been removed or photoshopped. And if you have something with hair or fur, that's a definite, uh, subject that you'll want to take a closer look at and maybe use the spot heel brush to get rid of any of those fine little bits that have been left behind. This point, you want to make sure you're on the correct layer in your layers panel. You want to be on the background, in this case, my water layer. So I'm going to use my lasso tool and I will 
really quickly just go around and select this splash. I do not have to be precise like we were with the pen tool because this is all pretty abstract. I'm gonna right click inside and just say fill and this drop down is already set to content aware fill. We'll see how well it does. That looks really great. So I will again command or control D to deselect and I have a wonderful background with which to work with. I'll turn back on the visibility of the dolphin, and this is a great place to save. Next, we're gonna go over to File, New, and we'll use the preset under Film and Video for HDTV. Of course, you'll use whatever preset fit the crop that you made earlier. Click Create, and it will open up this in a new tab. We want to go back over to our work and we want to take these two layers and transfer them over into the new tab. There are multiple ways of doing this. What I do is click one, hold shift, click the other. I go over to my toolbar and use the move tool. I click inside and hold, dragging over to the new tab, keep holding, keep holding, and then click to drop it in. It's okay if it doesn't fit size wise but we will go back and adjust that later anyway. Let's come up to our menu bar and click on the window, and we want our timeline window, which pops up on the bottom. And I wanna adjust the space, so I'm going to, on the top window, Command or Control minus sign, so I can see the outlying borders when we start to adjust the layers. In the timeline, you wanna make sure it says Create Video Timeline, and go ahead and select that, and it will take those two layers and add them to the timeline. Now in order to animate them, we need to convert them to smart objects. So in your layers panel, click one by one, right click and convert to smart object. And then the second layer, do the same thing. Click on it, right click, convert to smart object. You don't have to worry about the background layer. Now these guidelines here can be very useful, but I'm finding them a bit distracting. If you have them and want to turn them off, you'll go up to the menu bar, choose view and unclick extras. Now I do wanna see more of my timeline, so I will click and drag this up, and we're gonna work with our background, in my case, the water layer. I will click on this little carrot, and it will twirl down these options. We're going to work with transform, but you can play with opacity and style if you like. But we're going to work with transform, so we will click one time on this stopwatch. And what that does is it puts a keyframe into our timeline. This is an indicator of when things will start and stop moving and how they will move along as you are playing it. You only wanna hit the stopwatch once. If you hit it again, it actually deletes all your keyframes, which can be helpful if you needed to start over. So we have our timeline here set for five seconds. This diamond will allow us to add more keyframes, but the stopwatch already set our first one. So I will be adjusting the size and direction of the background layer, and I will choose Command or Control T to get my transformation bounding box. I will adjust the corners of the bounding box to scale it down so it fits within the white background. And I know that I want my water and sky to move from the right to the left. You can have yours move however you would like. I'm going to use the borders of the white background to line up my edges. So this will keep my horizon line nice and steady as I move. I'm using the arrow tools as well as my mouse to adjust the frame to make sure that it is perfectly aligned. So since I want it to move from the right to the left, I'm going to line it up with the left hand side for the first keyframe. Of course, you can have yours move up or down or twirl around. It's totally up to you. Be as creative as you like, but when you get it to where you want it, click to accept that transformation. Now go down to the timeline and you're gonna move your playhead. That's this blue with the red line and I'm moving it to the very end of the five second mark. And this is where we will set our second keyframe. So hit the diamond, not the stopwatch, to put that keyframe into place. You can see it here. And then we will command or control T to make the transformation bounding box reappear. I'm going to use either my arrow keys on the keyboard or the mouse to adjust the placement of the box. And I said that I wanted it to move from right to left. 
So, or left to right, now I forget. I'm moving it to the opposite side. I'm using the keys so that I can have more precision to make sure it is totally aligned and then I'll accept that transformation. If I grab the playhead and move it along the timeline, scrubbing through, you can see the background is now moving. And these blue lines here are indicating that the video is being rendered. So the more solid the blue lines, the better it will play. You can hit this play button here, or you can do the shortcut space bar to play it through. And as it becomes more solid, it will start to play better. Usually the second time around, it's a much more smoother playback. And I think that looks really great. Putting the playhead back to the start, I'm going to close that and toggle open the dolphin. Let's do a transformation clicking the stopwatch to start our first keyframe, and then Command T, and now I have the dolphin. I'm gonna move the dolphin off to the side so that it can jump through the sky like so. But I'm gonna put it over here so you can see my transformation. I'm gonna make it a little smaller to start with, and then I'm going to move my cursor so I can rotate it at the edge of that box. I'll start it off the side of the picture plane so that it will make an entrance as it's jumping over and accept that transformation. Move the playhead to the end of that five second mark. Click the diamond, not the stopwatch, to set a new keyframe. And now Command or Control T and move the subject matter where you'd like it. I'm going to make it a little larger so it's gonna grow as it moves. And then I'm going to rotate it to tip it down and set it off to the side so that it exits the frame. Click OK to accept that. Play it through and it looks pretty good, but I wanna add another keyframe into the center. So I'm gonna move my playhead to the middle point, add a new keyframe and Command or Control T, and I want the dolphin to jump up higher and can't be so big because it's got to grow so i'll make it a little smaller center it and then maybe rotate it a little bit so that it looks more realistic let's accept that and play it through and i think that looks much better it's getting a little bit more height as it is jumping across so you can add as many keyframes as you like you can make it spin and twirl and dance across the screen. You can make it grow or get smaller. It's totally up to you. You'll just keep setting those keyframes. Once you've got it where you like it, this is a good time to save your work. It's going to save it as a PSD. Then click OK. We're going to do File, Export, and we're going to turn this into a video. So you will render video. The presets that pop up here are great. You can change the location of where it is saving to. So I'm gonna to save to a, my desktop. Your format is H.264 and we see our document size. So you really don't have to change anything. You can change the name as well, but it will also use the name that you just saved your PSD as. And the last step will be to click render. Now this step can take a while to export your video. When the rendering is done, you can minimize Photoshop to find that file. I saved mine onto my desktop. I'm just going to grab it and move it over. Let's see which one was it, here we go. And I'm going to right click open with, and I wanna open it with an internet browser. I'm just gonna choose Google Chrome. And I can take a look at what it will play as, and I think this looks fantastic. It's not a GIF yet, so it only plays through once. I'll go ahead and close that. If I needed to make any changes, I could go back into Photoshop to make those changes, but I think I am ready to move on to the next step to turn it into a GIF. So again, back into Photoshop, and up at the menu bar, choose File, we are going to import video frames to layers, and then we're gonna find that MP4 that we just created. There's the video. We will open that video. In this dialog box, we have some choices. A lot of people will just choose from beginning to end. However, 
I need it to be smaller. So I need to come down here and limit it to every two frames. So it's going to choose every other frame to bring in to turn it into a GIF. Unfortunately, it means that this is going to jump faster. The GIF is going to play much faster than this video, but I'm okay with that because I need it to be a smaller size. You can actually make it even smaller by choosing three frames or four frames, but two frames will work for us. So now it opens up here. We have all of these layers and it depends on which size you picked, but I'm going to go up to my top layer, which is layer 75 and click on it. And I want to watermark my work. So I'm going to choose the text tool, come down to a bottom corner, and then I will type in my watermark. Whatever font family you would like to choose is fine. And we just want it to be a small size. So I have mine at 24 points. I don't want it to steal focus. I want, of course, the dolphin to be my focus. And I chose a white color. It's up to you however you would like to do those settings. We just don't want it to be too distracting. In the layers panel, I will click on that text layer and I'll drop down the opacity again to make it less distracting. All right, then we're going to go to File, Export, and we're gonna save for Web Legacy. If you don't see this option, it might be over here depending on which version you're using. Go ahead and click on that and it's going to open up this dialog box. Again, this box takes a little while to load. All of the presets over here should be just fine. And once your image pops up, if you want to see the whole thing, you can do the minus sign to zoom out. Now I am going to look at the size and I'm over 50 megabytes. I need to be under, but if it doesn't matter for yours, you can just go ahead and click save and skip forward. But I do need to get mine under that 50 megabit mark. So I'm going to adjust two things. One of the things I can adjust is dither. And that has to do with how the colors are being processed. And the smaller the percentage of dither, the more noise I'm going to see or graininess in those colors. That's just one of the consequences of having to have a smaller megabyte size for the end result. The other thing I can do is change the number of colors from 256 to 128. And that doesn't produce very much difference in the image, but it definitely drops down that size. So I'll hit save. We'll give it a file name and make note of where it is saving to. It's saving my GIF onto my desktop. This might take a while and Media Encoder helped us make the video. I wonder if it's also working on making this GIF. Once that box disappears, you can minimize Photoshop and locate your GIF. Here's mine. I'm going to right click open with and choose a web browser, in this case, Google Chrome. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out. The dither doesn't look so bad and the speed is just fine. But my real test is I needed to verify that it was the correct size. So I'll drop it into my slideshow and it's playing. So wonderful. I still have the MP4 video of this and I have my GIF. I can share these on multiple platforms. So that is how you take a two-dimensional photograph, turn it into a 2.5 dimensional parallax animation and a GIF using Photoshop.